Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Oh, there we got John Lewandowski. If you haven't noticed, hey. this is uh, we already have our uh, Predators coverage recorded, but we're going to talk about every trade and maybe even reiterate some of the Nashville things. So just so that you, if you guys didn't see it in that video, you'll you'll see what we said in this one. So with that, um, before that, I would like to wish um, my well wishes to the uh, uh, family of the young man in Minnesota. And I would like to wish um, Knoxville a, uh, a wet well wishes. I hope all the kids okay are okay. Yeah. Um, about an hour ago, I got a, uh, me and John both got notifications <laughs> that there was a high school shooting in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, as you guys know, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Um, anything that happens in the state of Wisconsin and in Tennessee and even in near Estero, Florida, for the Everblades, um, that does affect us um, uh, on an emotional level because we're connected. You know, right. we're connected to that that community. And Nashville has a rink in Knoxville. Um, the Predators do. Um, uh, so, uh, with that being said, and uh, much love to the Knoxville Ice Bears for the tribute this year with the catfish on their jerseys. That was a nice touch. Um, uh, so with all that being said, I wish that, uh, you know, everything, I wish these two communities a speedy recovery. Um, yes. Hockey is not just a game. It's a family. It's a community. Um, unlike some sports where it, 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 it not that I want to crap on the NBA or anything. Um, it is a community. Um, it is. You know, we care about each other. Um, when you play the game, you play for each other. Um, you know, yeah. if a guy gets hit wrong, even if you're the goalie, you're wanting to leave that crease and just, you know, yeah. and, 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 it, and it, that goes for the community too. hockey does a lot for the community. Yes, does, they do. And uh, the Willie O'Ree project, um, blue line buddies in Nashville, where they take cops and at risk youth and bring them to Preds games. Um, uh, the uh, Vanderbilt Cancer Health uh, Association for with that work with the Nashville Predators. They have a bell inside the uh, Preds arena that every child that beats cancer gets to go into the arena and look at all the stuff and meet with the players and stuff and, and ring the bell there. So all the cancer survivors that do get to go there, it, it is so important that they do these things in the community. And that's why right. Nashville leads what, some of the league in what they do in the community. You may not see it from an on ice perspective or from the fan perspective um, online, but in, in closing of all of that, you know, you see it in the community, all NHL teams do this very well, very subtly. And, yep. and, and, and sometimes subtlety is best when it comes to these things, because these people aren't in it for fame. They're in it because oh. they care. And that's, that's how the way it should be. Um, you know, athletes should care about the community that's paying to come see them. Right. You know, and, and that's the, you know, hard earned dollars they're paying, you know, some families may not even have the money, but they spend it to come see one game a year. Like I did last year with the Preds. I didn't have the money, but I spent it to go see the Preds play. And uh, I got to see some of the community work that they did because it was that uh, they honored one of their uh, cancer, uh, the cancer uh, patients. And he had been a, uh, he is known as the King of Nashville now. As far as the Preds are concerned, uh, they even gave him a key to the city. So that was really cool. Um, Nashville does a lot of wonderful work uh, with the military and the veterans. The NHL is really good at that. Um, and then for the better part, stay out of politics. So, um, you know, um, as far as community goes, these things affect the community. Uh, I pray for the Twins, Wild, and the uh, uh, Timberwolves. Um, organizations in their in their community because I yeah. want them to be able to go back to playing. Um, now all of their games today have been canceled and moved to a further date. Um, Minnesota will play their game against St. Louis on the 12th of May now. Um, but that's just something I wanted to get into before we got into all these. So let's jump into the two hot button trades. Get those out right away. Number one, Alrighty. Anthony Mantha. Anthony Mantha has been a really good hockey player for a really bad team. <laughs> um, Detroit had basically said, if you're not Maurice Sider, Philip Zadina, Dylan Larkin, or I think there was one other player, um, you're safe. Everybody else, we're listening to offers. 
So with that being said, um, Anthony Mantha was dealt to the Washington Capitals. Now, this Washington Capitals team was already stacked. Yeah, it was. And it is now even more so with the addition of Anthony Mantha. And they are a very well-coached team. My head coach is a former head coach in Nashville, uh, Peter LaViolette. La LaViolette does have his downsides, but he did win a cup with the Carolina Hurricanes um, with a team that uh, definitely at the time, looking at the roster, should not have won that. Um, no. <laughs> um, just looking at the roster, I'm not saying that they didn't deserve it. I'm saying that on paper, they would not have won. Um, uh, with that being said, Cam Ward in that series did stand on his head and he has been a very good coach, but, um, you know, Washington, they're looking to give Ovi a second cup and that as yeah, far as are. Ovechkin is concerned, um, him and Crosby, I will say this, Ovechkin's probably going to be the greatest goal scorer of, you know, of my generation, this generation's, and the next generation's lifetime. Because right, yeah. you're not going to see another guy who scores as much as he does. It's just not going to happen. There's no way McDavid gets close. He can light it up as much as he wants to. There's dry side of same thing for over there in Edmonton. It's not going to happen because there's no way you're going to be able to be that consistent for as long as Ovechkin has. Now, as far as the assist side of everything, you look at it and you see that uh, Crosby is on the other side of that flip coin. He does all the assist work, but he ain't going to get nowhere close to the amount of assists that Gretzky had. You right. know, but Ovechkin will get close to Gretzky's goal record, which nobody thought was going to be broken. And he is getting ever so close to it every, every he time. Really he is. And, 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 and that deserves to be noticed. Uh, you, you can hate the man. You can ever hate him and love him. Yeah. But always respect him because that's the part you can hate him, but you got to respect the talent. Right. You do. You know, and, and you don't stay in the NHL for, Going on, he was drafted in 04, almost two decades. 17 years. So by 2024, he'll probably still be in the league. Probably. Uh, um, and probably ever so close to Gretzky's record. Um, looking at it, I believe he's sixth or seventh all-time in scoring right now. And even to get into that, Mark, there's some pretty big names in there. Yeah, there are. Guys that are talked about highly to this day, you know, uh, Gordy Howe. Uh, for those of you Slapshy fans, I'm going to do it. Gordy! <laughs> uh, ha, ha. But we got to have some fun there. Um, Anthony Mantha adds physical, size, speed, skill. What they gave up was uh, Jacob Verona, young player, lots of upside. Richard Panic has upside, but it's been snake bitten over the last two years. Uh, first round this year and a second round next year. That is a solid get for the Red Wings as well. The yeah, Red Wings, the Red Wings have stockpiled for this draft. Now the question, and there's a big question mark on this draft. Okay. How much scouting are you really able to do in this pandemic era? Because in this pandemic year, a lot of the junior teams didn't play. Right. Um, so that leaves some of the Canadian players and, and, and them, I believe some of them did go overseas and, and play in, in junior leagues over there. Uh, some of the top, uh, higher end ones, uh, played in men's leagues and stuff like that. Um, it's not uncommon. Um, uh, Austin Matthews did it. Billy Tolvanen did it. Um, and look at and just look at what those guys it did for those guys' careers. They came into the AHL and they came in swinging and were able to get into the NHL either right. immediately or in the next two years, and and that fast tracked their development and their ability to play. So yep. we'll see what happens yeah. there. Um, <clears throat> the other big trade was Taylor Hall. Now Taylor Hall, <sighs> as much as I hate to say this. Uh, Taylor Hall, as I'm wearing a Buffalo jersey, Taylor Hall has had the worst luck as far as teams he's gone to. Um, you think about it, you went from Edmonton, who just got McDavid, right, to 
New Jersey. And you win a Hart Trophy there. Cool. League MVP? Cool. But then it went downhill from there. And ever since right. then, you went to Arizona. You yeah, won Arizona their first uh, playoff series in almost seven years. So then you add in that, and then you look at, like, okay, now he's going to Buffalo. Maybe he'll play with Eichel. Right. Eichel gets hurt. Buffalo spirals. It's just, you know, and, and, and for that, they also got Curtis Lazar. Curtis Lazar is a solid hockey player. Not the greatest, not the worst. Good fourth-line player. But Buffalo's return in this is questionable because a second round pick this year and Anders Bjork. Now Bjork has a lot of potential and I could see him being very highly coveted um, by a lot of teams. So with yeah. that being said, you know, that, that does play into that. Now I don't have much for that because these, like I said, the, the, the Washington one, Washington basically said chips all in. Um, yeah. And it looks like Boston didn't do that. Uh, Boston kind of played it safe with theirs. Now, if Buffalo had waited it out, they probably would have got more. But, probably, in all honesty. But, but, but at that time, also, do you take what you're willing to get? If right. you see, okay, I like Andres Bjork. I wanted to draft him, but he just wasn't there when the, you know, when the draft. When my name came up and my and, you know, Buffalo Sabres, you're now on the clock and he's not there, but you wanted to draft him and you saw an opportunity to yeah. now get him. That may have been what was one of the deciding factors in that. I do not know. Right. I'm not the it, GM for Buffalo, but um, then another trade now for that is. All right. So the next trade was the uh, Blackhawks and Vancouver Canucks. Uh, the Blackhawks get a fourth round pick for a fifth round pick and Matt, the rights to RFA Madison Bowie. Uh, Madison Bowie is a very good hockey player. Kind of got stuck in Detroit and, and it didn't go anywhere for him. Believe it or not, with all of the bad things that Detroit did have, they still had solid defense. So Madison right. Bowie was still stuck in a log jam with a GM who thought, oh, well, this old guy is still here. This guy from the cup years is still here. Maybe we could get a couple more out of this guy and this guy. And, and it just never turned out for him. So Madison no, Bowie didn't. signed with the Blackhawks. They ended up getting a fourth round uh, traded to the Blackhawks. They ended up getting a fourth round pick for him, giving up Madison Bowie in the fifth. I think they lost this, to be honest. You trade a player and you move up around. I mean, I think you lost. That's my personal opinion. Uh, then we've got the Winnipeg Jets getting Jordy Ben for a sixth even trade. Yeah. I'd say even trade. Uh, same thing with the Washington Capitals getting Michael Roffel for a fifth round pick from the Flyers even trade. He's a fourth line, round, uh, fourth line guy. Adds grit to the line. Uh, along with adding Mantha, uh, Washington looks like they're going all in for a cup. Yeah, it really does. And I can guarantee that they were upset with last year's cup run getting bounced in the first yeah. round. All right. Up uh, next, uh, the I know Anaheim, I didn't see that coming last year. Uh, Carolina traded uh, Hayden Flurry, one of their top defensive prospects, for Yanni uh, Hockenpah. Yanni Hockenpah has been a uh, Kind of a bust for the Ducks, and uh, Hayden Flurry was a huge cap hit for the Carolina Hurricanes. Wasn't that he wasn't producing; he was just a huge cap hit. And right. Yakupa was a lot cheaper, and maybe they get a cup, maybe they you know change the scenery, but they also get a sixth for it. So uh, Carolina a little bit confuses me with this move. Well, who is younger, Flurry or uh, uh, I'm going to butcher his name? Yakupa. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, actually, Flurry's younger. Okay. Hockepa is 21, Flurry's 20. Not much of a gap there, but. No, not much of a gap. But you got a year, and, and, and I mean, the, the, the projected ceiling was higher for Flurry than it is for Hockepa. So, yeah. With that being said, uh, the Sharks and Leafs, uh, they make simple trade, uh, forward for forward, uh, probably an AHL move. 
uh, Alexander yeah. Barbanov for uh, Antti Sumalini. Uh, Sumalini is a kind of a fourth line center guy, kind of a great guy, kind of a guy you want with you if you're going on a deep run in the playoffs in case of injury. Uh, as we said, Nashville in our other video traded for Erica Branson for Brendan Fortunato in the seventh round pick. Um, the Ducks yeah. traded Ben Hutton to the Leafs, who I happen to be wearing their winter classic jersey the last year Reebok made jerseys. <laughs> Um, uh, for a fifth, um, Eric Gustafson for the Flyers moves to Montreal for a seventh round pick. Boy, did I ever think that I'd be saying Flyers and Montreal would be making a trade with each other. Right. That's like the Leafs in Montreal making a trade that doesn't cripple the other one. Right. Um, but that's that one. Uh, the... I think the only one that really confused me out of all the trades today was this one right here. Sam Bennett to the Florida Panthers for a sixth, Sam Bennett in a sixth round pick from the Calgary Flames for a Emmelyn Heineman and a 2022 second round pick. Now, Emil, Emil, Emil Heimelin, Emil, sorry. I, uh, um, High upside has um, a bit of an issue. I don't really want to talk about it because it's all social media based, but it's right. political. Um, he uh, uh, told uh, the Panthers to not trade him to Canada or Canadian based team. They did. We'll see what comes of this. Um, it, it's been one of those things where he's kind of anti-Canada on his on his social media, so we'll see what happens with Calgary there. Um, okay. Obviously, Calgary still being in Canada, um, we'll see what happens. I mean, right. All right. Um, Carl Soderberg makes his return to the Avalanche. Uh, John, yep, is, back to Colorado, he goes. Now, one of the things that I have said about Soderberg when he was with Colorado the first time. Boy, was he overpaid. Yeah. Uh, five million. He was a little bit. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, but what the Blackhawks got in return, uh, they got Josh Dickinson and Ryder Ralston. Uh, rights to Ryder Ralston. Uh, I think, personally, Chicago got the better end of this deal in the long term. If Colorado does not win a cup, uh, uh, this trade was for not. So, I mean, and that's going to be the case for a lot of these teams. Right. It really uh, is the case. Like Nashville planned to play it safe with giving up a 2023 20, and Brandon Fortunato, where a lot of these teams were just going chips all in. And, yeah. and, and you saw a lot of these guys just dumping players because they don't want to protect them when, when Seattle comes around. Right. You know, um, so the next trade was Yati, uh, Matthias Yanmark and a fifth. For a second in 2021 and a third in 2022, uh, the Blackhawks get the picks. Uh, Vegas gets the player in a fifth. Um, my personal opinion, are the Blackhawks just saying, Nashville, here you go, have the fourth seed? Right. I mean, is, is that where this is going? Because you guys are confusing me. Oh, we're going to make the playoffs. We're not going to make the playoffs. We're going to make the playoffs. We're not going to make the Make up your mind. Um... Also, um, this was also part of that trade. Uh, the uh, uh, Sharks get the fifth round pick in 2022 from Vegas. In return, um, they're eating some of the salary from Matthias Yanmark. Hmm. All right. Um, Tampa Bay trades uh, Magnus Corona. No, I'm not kidding. Magnus Corona. Ooh, I'd hate to have that name right about now. Um, but uh, for Frederick Cleason, um, Tampa Bay, do you have a problem with young goalies protecting the back end there? I mean, you guys have a goalie, but you don't really have a backup goalie. So every right. time you guys get young goalies, you're just, oh, Ingram, bye. You know, uh, Magnus Corona now, bye. You know, I mean, do you have something against making sure that your future is protected? 
Right. All right. Uh, the New Jersey Devils get a conditional fourth round pick. It becomes a third round pick if the Edmonton Oilers win a playoff series for Dmitry Kulikov, six foot six defenseman. Um, not a lot of upside, but still there. All right. Uh, we got a forward for forward. These guys are third line forwards at best. Okay. Uh, Vancouver gets Matthew Highmar. Uh, Chicago gets Adam Gaudet. Um, Highmar has a higher ceiling. <laughs> See what I did there? But uh, <laughs> uh, and Adam Gaudet, uh, he's more of a uh, grit top nine, um, bottom six player. Um, yeah. Uh, another big move, but it wasn't really big. Um, Pittsburgh traded for Jeff Carter. Lots of playoff experience there. I think Pittsburgh's trying to make one more run at it. Just get one more with with Crosby, with Malkin. They're not getting any younger. Right. Eventually, I'm going to have to rebuild and move these players. But with that being said, uh, they get a conditional second, uh, third round pick if they Pittsburgh makes it past the first round of the playoffs. It becomes a second. In 2022, and the fourth in 2023 becomes a third. Yep. Good move for LA. You get out from under that cap. Right. Um, uh, the Islanders get Braden Colburn from Ottawa for a seventh in 2022. Not much there. Um, the Leafs get themselves a steady backup goalie in David Riddich for a third in 2022. Yeah. Um, the Leafs would probably be my my team I pick to to be a threat in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, the Boston Bruins get Mike Riley, defenseman, for a 2022 third um, even trade. Pretty close. Yeah. I would have given him a fourth, but they gave a third. Uh, the Leafs also got Stefan Nolson uh, for a fourth grit player, fourth line player. Uh, but the good, the big one that, that they got was Nick Felino. Nick Felino for a fourth and a first. I'm going to say this right now. I want to see Toronto's cap hit right now because. <laughs> right. Um, Toronto, with all the moves they made, some of these guys got a pretty high cap hit. So. Right. Uh, let's take a look at Toronto's cap hit here real quick. The North Toronto. Toronto has $120,628 in cap. Open. Um, the big problem for them is you got Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, and John Tavares all making 10 plus mil. That's a, that's quite a few players over 10 mil. And then you got three defensemen, five mil, five mil, five mil. You got a forward making six mil, William Nylander. Kerfoot's making three mil. Um, Redditch will probably be your starter with Campbell. Uh, Long-term injury relief is Frederick Anderson and Riley Nash. I understand why they did that. Those are cap dumps. Um, their UFAs after this season, which is probably why they went and got Riddich because Anderson's probably not going to resign in somewhere in the ballpark where right. it is uh, feasible for cap. And they do have Billy Valalainen in in the wings for as far as goaltending, and they have an arbitration for him in this year. So there's that. Okay. Uh, so the Leafs will be okay. Um, I do want to talk about something in a minute, but I'll get to that. Uh, John Merrill sent from the Red Wings to uh, uh, the Canadians for Hayden for Beak and a fifth round, pretty even there. Um, yeah. The Capitals got rid of uh, Jonas Signenhaller. He had some upside, but I, I just didn't see him fitting in that system. Um, yeah. uh, and they got a conditional third. Uh, Brian Lashoff sent to Columbus for a a third and a first. Huh? Hmm. In addition to that trade, that the uh, Red Wings have traded Dennis Savard at a fourth. I, I just don't understand that. So 
basically Columbus gets Brian Lashoff, Red Wings get Savard, Red Wings trade Savard for a fourth. Uh, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets get a third and a first. I mean, that's one of those head scratchers. Yeah. All right. Uh, another really another one of those uh, Colorado Avalanche trades that with, with Jonas Johansson just getting acquired made me scratch yeah. my head a little bit. But Devin Dubnik goes to Colorado for a fifth this year and Greg Patran. I, 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 Dubnik's on his last leg. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, I do think Colorado's got some decisions to make. Um, next year, their projected cap hit is they have 23 million in cap to make work to sign they have to sign brandon sod gabriel landis cog pierre edward balmond carl sodersberg and liam o'brien that's just their forwards along with tyson yost yeah um, Patrick Nemeth needs to be resigned and Kale McCarr needs to be resigned. I personally quite a few signings coming up, yeah. Along with Philip Grubauer, Devin Dumnik, and Jonas Johansson. I mean, to really look at it, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 12 re signings. Plus, you got to sign T if you want TJ Tynan, Sheldon Dries, uh, Kiefer Sherwood, Be- Travis Barron, Ty Lewis, Mika Salamaki, uh, Mike Vacon, um, uh, Connor Timmons, Dennis Gilbert, Daniel Renoff, um, and Adam uh, Werner. The reserve list is, and they also have to sign Alex Bucage, uh, Luca Burzen, Trent Miner, and Sasha Maluda. If they do not do this by June 1st, they will be available for uh, re entry to the NHL draft. Okay. So, Colorado will be interesting to look at from the cap perspective. Do they have any buyout? Uh, retain salary? Ian Cole, just for this year. But I mean, you're going to have to buy out Eric Johnson? I mean, right. is that what you really want to do? Pavel for Cones, too. I mean, unless you're going to keep him and, and, and let a goalie walk. But I mean, for Colorado, there's a lot more questions than there are answers. Uh, the general manager, Joe Sackick, I, I do not envy him in the coming months. Um, not only that, but with all of this, who do you put a, who do you protect? I mean, right. I mean, that's another problem because if you have all these UFAs, you cannot protect a UFA or an upcoming UFA in the in it. So you gotta you kinda gotta maybe let uh Valeri Nichuskin, JT Confer, uh Jonas Donskoy, Nemzo Kadri, and uh Andre Barakovsky, uh McKinnon and, and Miko Rantman. You I mean there's a lot of questions there. And yeah. Landis Cox gonna want Rantman's kind of money. Right. And around the nine mil mark, which they just don't have the cap space for. Yeah, cap cap space is gonna be an issue for them. And this is a question for a lot of teams, not just them. Right, it really is. I mean it's like you said, a lot of teams are putting all their chips into their basket, man. And and some teams like that's been a really weird year with you know COVID and everything and uh um, it's been no. great that we've even gotten this far, you know. 
uh, with with well, what seven teams I think it is that that were Dang. out for a couple weeks with COVID. I mean, we've done the NHL's done a wonderful job, an amazing job, um, making sure that we still have games, rescheduling so that teams that were off would play. Um, right. Uh, just the amount of work that they put in this year, the NHL's uh, scheduling PR and everything, their department has probably had their hands full from day one. But oh, yeah. they've done a wonderful job. Wonderful. Um, on, on to the next one. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres traded on April 10th, uh, Brendan Montour for a third round pick um, in 2021. I am going to go into Buffalo and Detroit's and uh, Columbus's picks here and see what everybody's got because – um, there's a lot there. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs also traded the uh, uh, Columbus a seventh round pick for Riley Nash. Uh, Patrick Nemeth went to the Avalanche for a fourth round pick in 2022. And the Panthers got Lucas Carlson and Lucas Walmart from the Blackhawks for Brent Connolly, Riley Stallman, Henrik Borgstrom, and a seventh. Um, the Islanders traded AJ Greer, uh, Manston Jobst. A first in 2021 and a fourth in 2022 for Nicholas, or sorry, Kyle Palmieri. Nicholas Palmieri is still in juniors. Uh, Kyle Palmieri and Travis Zajac. Um, I wouldn't have gave up the first. I maybe a second no. or a third. But um, uh, welcome back to the Blackhawks, Vinny Hinnestrosa. They traded uh, for him for Brad Martin. So we'll see what kind of goes on from there. But beyond that, right. Um, Brendan Lemieux was moved from the Rangers for a fourth to the Kings. Eric Stahl was moved from Buffalo for a third and a fifth in this year's draft to the Canadians. Um, also, uh, anyone that made a trade going this way or that way um, through the U.S. and Canada is a seven-day quarantine, and then they are able to play, unless they have had their vaccine, which changes everything. Okay. Then they just have to take a COVID test for three days and then they can play. So it all comes down to if you take the COVID test and then you get the vaccine, um, you're still going to have to wait the seven days because it takes a minimum of two weeks for it to be effective. Right. Um, I have got my first dose of Pfizer. I get my second dose on uh, the 27th of this month. Um, I believe, yeah, John, my birthday. I believe <laughs> John gets his soon too. Yeah, the 19th. Um, but with that, that has been your trade deadline. Um, uh, I, like I said, uh, those are all the trades. So let's look at what uh, what the draft's going to look like for, say, Detroit. All right. Mm -hmm. Detroit has two firsts, three seconds, uh, two thirds, two fours, two fifths, a sixth, no seventh. General Manager Stevie Y over there is definitely as as a guy who did not like the Red Wings. I did when they were whenever they played for the Avalanche. I did cheer for them. Um, <laughs> I liked Sackick as a player. Greatest rivalries, Avs and Red Wings, man. I I did like Sackick as a player, as a GM. I do not like him at all. Um, I think if you're going to be an owner, you should not be a GM. Uh, there's just too, you know, too much power there. I think that uh, that is a thing. Um, now, with that being said, uh, one of the nice things for the uh, Red Wings is they get out from under Henrik Zetterberg's contract finally. Right. Um, that six million cap hit. They also get oh, out wow. from under Tyler Bertuzzi's, Robbie Fabrice, and Bobby Ryan's cap it. Okay. Um, so looking at next year, they have fifty million in cap space. Holy moly! Wow. You want to talk about it? You want to talk about <laughs> a team that can make a splash in free agency? Right. Yeah. Can they, they ever? And also, Stefan Weiss, they get out from under that contract. Um, you're looking right now, they have cap space of 35 million right now. They are actually under the league league uh, ability for cap. So they are getting a bonus penalty, a hit against them for 1.1 million. 
because what's, of what's that. I don't get that. Why why are they getting that? Um, basically, it's a cap hit against the cap. You either have the choice to take a cap hit or lose a pick. Okay. Um, the other other team you really want to look at going into the draft is the Buffalo Sabres. They are probably going to have the one of the top three picks. Yeah. Um, going into the draft, they have one first, two seconds, two, three thirds. Uh, is that conditional? No, the Rangers have it. All right. So the Rangers have that pick. So they have three thirds. Oops, I actually clicked out here. Um, a fourth, a fifth, two sixths, and a seventh. Okay. Um, upcoming in cap, they do have some re-signing to do. Uh, Linus Allmark, they're working on re-signing him. They're going to let Carter Hutton walk. I am not surprised by that at all. Right, me either. Um, they do have Dustin Tokarski. He's still playing. <laughs> um, on, um, and then their, uh, retained salary, um, Obviously, he's going to hit them, but they do have a buyout for okay. uh, Christian Erhoff that goes all the way to 2029. Oh, wow. But no money. Hmm. They paid all the money up front. It's just okay. he gets little bonuses dispersed throughout that time. Wow. Uh, then they have Cody Hodgson, who has not played since 2014 until 2023. Um, their projected cap next year is $32 million. Um, so the other team that was a major kind of seller, um, one of the things you really are worried about with, with say, Calgary, um, Calgary, they got Gaudreau and all those guys locked up for a while, but I mean, yeah. They really don't have much in the favor of of Capita. Uh, they do okay. have uh, a first this year, a second this year, two thirds, a fifth, a sixth, and seventh. Um, the one thing uh, going forward, uh, not to toot our own horn here, but um, mm -hmm. Nashville kept all theirs intact uh, as well. Uh, they have a first, second, third, two fourths, a fifth, and a sixth. Um, so they have the ability to move around a lot of pieces too. Their projected cap right. for next year is $18 million. Um, predict Predicting that the cap stays the same. Okay. Now, I would not be surprised. All right, so one of the other things, they have, what? What do you mean, salary remaining? What do you mean? Oh, the Shea Weber thing. Never mind. Um, uh, Kyle Turris, uh, he's a buyout for them till 2026, 27 at 2 mil. But Steven Santini, um, he, he's done after next season. Um, okay. After next season, I would not be surprised to see Nashville start a rebuild at 40 million cap. Hit. They have 40 million in cap relief. And if you truly think about it, you could probably re-sign Ekholm. You could probably re-sign Gabranson. Right. Benning's gone. Um, we'll see what happens. I would not be surprised to see maybe a, a let go of Brad Richardson at the end of the year. He's played maybe five games for the Preds all year. Other than that, he was on injury. Um, right. 
Barvesky, I wouldn't mind seeing a buyout. Uh, I mean, they go beyond what the roster is. So um, they'd give him a 2.5 for the next four years, opening up some uh, 1.7 in cap space. So okay. there's a lot that Nashville could do to open up cap space going forward. Yeah, there is. Um, uh, the one problem for some teams like Colorado that puts all their money into one line <laughs> is how are you going to pay to keep your team competitive? Because if somebody, say, shuts down that top line and your other lines can't produce, at the clip that other teams, you know, four lines are producing, um, Colorado may be looking at some issues going forward. Now I know how badly Joe Sackick wants to get back to the dynasty era, but it is very hard to build a dynasty in the modern day hockey. In this day and age, it really is hard. But winning the Stanley Cup is one of the hardest things to do nowadays. Just ask Tampa Bay. They right. were they were shoe in for the last three years and only have one cup to show for it. How much yep. longer, you know, I mean, even as Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh took them a couple of years. Blackhawks took them a, a while and look at where they're at now. You don't stay good for a long time. Now, um, oh, with that being said, uh, just added the Sharks acquire a fourth round pick uh, from the Leafs for okay. uh, retaining – 50% of Nicholas Bellino's contract. Okay. So that was just announced by NHL TV. So with that being said, this has been from Walking to Nashville. We will see you guys later.